question and answer lesson just for you. During this live stream, you will be able to ask questions using the link that either Todd or Dave will share in the chat over there. I'm Bob the Canadian. Welcome to this uh, Saturday morning English lesson. Saturday morning for me. I know that around the world there are different time zones and for some of you it is afternoon. For some of you it is evening and for some of you it is maybe midnight. I don't think so but it could be if you're up really really late. Uh, I'm just checking my audio here. It looks like everything is working. So let's get started. I'm Bob the Canadian. Welcome. Uh, I just want to mention as well that if you are listening to this later uh, via a podcast, thank you so much. The audio from this lesson will be available as a podcast later today. So if you do want to listen to it while you drive your car, while you work out, while you cook supper, it is available for that as well. Um, but also don't forget, it is a good idea to watch this a second time with the English subtitles on as well to practice your English speaking. A few rules before we get started. All questions need to be asked in the chat. Please do not ask questions, sorry, all questions need to be asked using the form that will be linked in the chat. Please don't ask questions in the chat. Keep the chat light, keep it in English, uh, and enjoy talking to each other there. Um, and please don't ask for the link. You can always scroll back and the link will pop up from time to time as well. Um, and just kind of follow the directions that Dave and Todd give you. Uh, I'm going to get started here. We have a few questions coming in. Uh, the first question is, Dimitro says from Ukraine, I just heard a guy describing a thing he likes and he finished with, and I dig it. <laughs> There's also a Beatles song, dig it. Is it a real phrase and what does it mean? When I say I dig it, it means I like it or I love it. So if I say, you know, I like the music of the Rolling Stones, I really dig it. It means that I really like it. It is an older English phrase though. You do not hear it very often anymore. Um, most likely you will hear st uh, students in particular say that something is uh, sick or something is lit. That was a popular word about a year ago. There are always new ways to say that you like something. So to say I dig it is an older way to say that you like something. Next question is from Lolly Lolly. Uh, Lolly Lolly is a member here of this channel. So thank you, Lolly Lolly, for being a member. I appreciate the support. Um, Lolly says, Bonjour, Bob. Please, what's the difference between drought and dryness? So in our area, if it doesn't rain for a very long time, we would actually say that it is dry. And if it gets to the point where plants are suffering, where plants are having trouble growing, we would say that it is a drought, okay? We wouldn't use the word dryness to describe what things are outside, um, but dryness is just the state of things being dry. So um, we would definitely describe it as it's dry outside or it's been dry for a number of days. And then if plants start to suffer, um, then we would say that there is drought. Um, let's see here. Next question is from Big Daddy. Hello, Uncle Bob. Hello, Big Daddy. Could you please, so could you tell me what exact, a little correction here. So here's how I would say it. Could you please tell me what, ex, what it exactly means if somebody says that they are going to give with something? Thank you very much. They're going to give. So I'm not familiar with that as a phrase. Let me look at it again and see if I can um, interpret it. It says that they are going to maybe give up. I will just talk about give up. If you give up on something, it means that you quit doing it. I think that's what you were asking. Uh, I see Lolly in the chat saying, thank you. No problem, Lolly. Thank you uh, for being a faithful member of the channel. Lolly has been around for uh, a long time. Uh, question about from Pablo. Um, Pablo, pa sorry, Paolo, what's the difference between quick and fast? Um, they are almost the same thing. You know, I can run really quick. I can run really fast. Generally, maybe fast is faster than quick, but uh, usually they are used interchangeably. Elias Gomez, thank you so much, first of all, for being a member, and secondly, for uh, leaving a little super chat there for me. Uh, Elias says, it is a pleasure to be a member. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the super chat. Thank you for being a member. Uh, Sue has the next question. Sue's question is, could you dive into at work a bit, please? The internet and teachers are divided. Can we say at my work 
for example, problems at my her work receptionist from my work. Thank you. Yes. So at my work, we had a big meeting yesterday. At my work, we uh, work all day long. You can definitely say that. I could say at his work, um, they need to wear safety boots. At her work, they need to wear a specific uniform. So definitely you can say that. You can say at my work, at her work, at his work, at your work. Um, for sure, no problem saying all those things. Next question from Mary, and it's about my pronunciation. <laughs> Mary says, hi, Bob. Thanks a lot for your videos. You're welcome. I've noticed that you pronounce the word conversation with Z or Z sound. Do all Canadians say it like that? I do. I have listened carefully in my area and in my local area, you will often hear people say conversation. So it's supposed to be conversation conversation, but I often say in your English conversations, you should be practicing new words. So you hear how I make a little bit of a Z sound. By the way, in English in Canada, the letter um, Z, um, we say Z. We don't say Z like our American cousins do. Let's see here. Um, Next question is about the passive form. Bilal says, hello, sir, I want to ask, do we use the passive form like they have been, they have been being trained for three years? So um, that is a totally correct English sentence. It is a little bit um, oververbed. That's how I would say it. I would probably just say they have been trained for three years, okay? Um, I think that would be a better way to say it. I'm not sure if that totally answers your question, but at least gives you a bit of an idea. Let's see here. Um, remember, I generally don't answer grammar questions. They're just too hard to answer on the fly. Um, Ramon says, hello, Bob. <clears throat> Excuse me. I just want to say hi to you before I go to bed. Well, hi, Ramon. It's nice to uh, have you here. Uh, I hope you have sweet dreams. That's what we say sometimes uh, when people are heading off for sleep for the night. Nathan, uh, Deekshanch in the <laughs> chat says Z for life because I know there are many countries where we use uh, that pronunciation for that letter. Nathan GR says, hi, Teacher Bob. I'd like to know how can we use, how can I use the word defect or defects? Thank you. So. If this cup leaked, it would have a defect, okay? If it was brand new, if I just bought this cup and tea was leaking out the bottom, I would say that it has a defect. When you use the plural, you could say, let's say the lid didn't work right and there was a hole, I could say this cup has defects, okay? So defect for one, defects if there is more than one. Um, let's see here, Turge has a question about, hi Bob, I was wondering, uh, what is the difference between each and every? Thank you so much. So <clears throat> this is a tricky one because we use these words. Uh, <laughs> you, could say, you could say things like each morning I have a cup of coffee, every morning I have a cup of coffee. So in those two sentences, they are the same. I could say in my class, I gave each student a chocolate bar. I never do that, by the way, but I could, I guess. Uh, and I could also say I give every student a chocolate bar. So they can mean exactly the same thing. And there are a couple example sentences for you. Deekshanch, hi Deekshanch, says, as a native English speaker, how do you feel about English being the global lingua franca? Um, first of all, I think learning any language helps the world. And I think English speakers should also be learning a second language. I love it when English speakers learn to speak another language because I think it helps the brain, but more importantly, I think it helps to understand other cultures and other people around the world when you learn their language. Do I think English is the most important language in the world? No, but do I think it is quickly becoming the language of business, if not already the language of business? Yes. So how do I feel about it? I, I think it's cool for me as a native speaker, but I do feel like a lot of people in the world need to work hard to learn a very difficult language. And that's why I do what I can to help people. So it's pretty cool that um, all of you are learning English. I, I applaud you. That's when you clap for someone. I applaud you. Let's see here, um, Rosa from Brazil 
has the next question. By the way, I want to go back and thank Deke Shanch because he helps me in a number of ways on my channel. He does translations to Hindi for some of my videos. Thanks for that, Deke Shant. Uh, and he helps put together ideas for playlists. That is awesome as well. Um, before I do the next question, BR's Achilizidos has given us a super chat or given me a super chat. Hi, Bob. I'm Denison from Brazil. Aracachao Zergipe. I'm not sure what that is. I hope I didn't just say a bad word. I should look that up before I say it out loud, shouldn't I? Because you never know. Uh, it's probably a place. That's my guess. It definitely is a place. So thank you very much <laughs> for the super chat and let's get to the next question. Rosa from Brazil says, hi Bob, I like Q&A. Awesome, that's great. Thank you. Are contents and features synonyms? So not really. When you buy something new, the contents are what is in the box. The features are what the thing you bought can do. So if you buy a new radio, the contents of the box would be the radio, the cord that you use to plug it into the wall. The features would be whether it gets AM and FM, whether it plays DVD or CDs. So a little bit different. Um, there might be an example where they're the same, but I can't think of one off the top of my head. Let's see here. Um, next question is from Max Tennyson. I have to edit this a bit. Um, let's see. Let's see. Um, I heard from a friend who is studying Chinese in Canada that you teach him economics. So Max Tennyson says, good morning, sir. I did edit out some uh, information there, Max, but thank you. I heard from my friend who is studying in Canada that you teach him economics. Is it true? Yes, I have. I do teach business right now. And a small part of that class is economics. Uh, Helio Furusawa. Hi, Bob. Learning so much from you. Thanks so much for the super chat. That is very generous of you. Thank you very much. Sammy here. Let's see. Um, next question. I'm trying to go as fast as possible, but speak clearly. It's hard to do both at the same time. Sammy says, hi, Bob. I am a big fan of yours. Thank you for teaching us. You're welcome. Um, good. Could you tell me what is niche? I have heard, I have been hearing this word many times, but couldn't understand. Thank you. So first of all, there are two pronunciations. There's niche and niche. Okay. And we use both in Canadian English, but basically I make English videos on YouTube. The niche or niche that I make videos for is English learners or people who are learning English. There are also exercise videos on YouTube. That's another niche or niche. Um, I actually don't know which pronunciation is more common. In my um, conversations, people will use niche or niche both. Because we live close to America, sometimes we have words with two pronunciations. Uh, next question from Swami. What does so far mean? So, so far in this video, I have answered 12 questions. So it means since the beginning of this live lesson, I have answered about 12 questions. I think I've answered more so far. But essentially, when you use so far, you're talking about an amount of time since something started. Um, and I think I've answered more, but I don't, I don't actually know how many questions I answer during a live lesson. Uh, Ishmael says, what is the difference? A little correction there. In use between, so I'm adding words to your question, Ishmael. Ishmael what is the difference in use between I see and I understand? How can I use them in any situation? Thank you. When you say I see, it means you're agreeing with someone while they're explaining something to you. So if someone says to me, you know, uh, China has a huge population, I could say, I see. Um, and they could say, many uh, children in China go to school. I could say, oh, I see. Um, and if you say, I understand, it means the same thing. It's just a way to agree with someone as a conversation is happening um, so that they know that you are listening to them. Uh, next question from Mohammed is, Mohammed says, what is have got to? So I've got to go buy gas today. So there's a little sentence popping up there. I've got to go buy gas today. It means that I have to go buy gas today. It means that I must buy gas today. It's an informal way of saying that you need to do something. So I've got to eat some food later because I'm hungry. I've got to go to the grocery store. 
Uh, it's just a very informal way of saying that you have to do something. Let's question from Maxime. Question is, hello, Bob, could you please tell me the difference between using a lot of and lots of? Thank you so much. So I have, let's see, what do I have a lot of? I have a lot of computer games on my computer. I have lots of computer games on my computer. Let me say those again. I have a lot of computer games on my computer. I have lots of computer games on my computer. In those two sentences, you can use them and they mean exactly the same thing. Next question, Mr. Alexi Gaming. Bonjour, Bob, I am from Canada as well. Have you, oh, hello, and a fellow Canadian. Have you ever been to Vancouver where I live? Um, I have been to Vancouver twice in my life. It was a long time ago though, before Jen and I had children's, children. I said children's, but children. Before Jen and I had children. Um, I'm a little tired, I don't know why, so hopefully I don't make too many mistakes during this live stream. Patrick says, hello Bob, I have a question. What's the best way to learn English using your videos uh, on YouTube? All the best. So the best way to learn um, English using my videos on YouTube would be um, to not just watch my videos on YouTube. So first of all, um, just watching videos on YouTube um, isn't going to do all you need in order to learn English. The best thing to do is to do a lot of reading in English, to do a lot of listening, and you can use my videos for your listening component if you are practicing listening to English, um, and then you should be writing in English. You can use my videos for that as well. You can watch a video of mine and then try to write down the things that you learn, uh, but you should also be speaking English. So you should read, listen, write, speak, um, and during the listening and writing portion, you could use my videos. Um, watch them twice. Watch them once with the English subtitles on. All of my Tuesday videos have English subtitles, word for word, accurate subtitles. Watch it once with the subtitles on, maybe twice, and then watch it again with the subtitles off. That is the best advice that I can give you. Uh, next question, Ruby. Question is, how, Ruby says, how can I improve my lecture comprehension? I'm a student in a master's program of social science and I need to understand books of social theory in English. So lecture can mean two things. The, what we mean in English when we say lecture is how can you understand the professor or teacher when he is talking uh, to a large group of students. You might also mean reading because lecteur we use it's not an English word. So if you're talking about how can you understand your professor better, record every single lecture, okay? And listen to it again later. If you're talking about how can you understand your reading better, try to read about your subject area in your own language and read, it in, read about it in English. That would be my recommendation. Let's see here. Next question from Tau Vidas. Hello, Bob. What's the difference between does he have work versus has he got work? Thank you. They are the same. They're somewhat informal, but I could say, oh, your cousin, does he have work right now? Because I could hire him if he doesn't. Oh, your cousin, has he got work right now? Because if he doesn't, I could, I could hire him. I'm not hiring, by the way. Those are just examples. <laughs> but anyways, that both of those would be somewhat informal, but they are also correct. Let's see here. Um, Adrian has the next question. So I want to say hi to the 485 people who are here. Thank you very much. Right around this point in the live lesson, we have usually a flood of people come in and they start asking questions in the chat. Um, I think because YouTube promotes this video. Please know if you have just arrived, thank you for being here. If you have questions, please use the link that Todd and Dave are posting. Don't ask questions in the chat. Please use the chat for English conversation. Uh, next question, Adrian says, hey Bob, how are you doing? I need to know how I can speak without thinking about what words to use, thanks. You just need to practice a lot. Um, I highly recommend that you hire a tutor. Um, there are plenty of apps where you can hire a tutor. There's actually a link in the description for a website called Preply. That is a great place to hire someone to have an, a conversation with a native English speaker. The best way to start to think in English is to have lots of English conversations. I know it costs money, but uh, I highly recommend it. Um, it works really well. Um, you just sign up and you, uh, you meet with them via Facebook or Skype. Ola says, hi, Bob, I'm from Ukraine. 
Your lessons are awesome. Thank you very much. My question is, what does it mean, leave no stone unturned? Thanks. Thank, thanks a lot. So thanks a lot. I correct a little correction there. Um, to leave no stone unturned means to do a thorough job. Okay. It means to do a job really, really well. So let's say I was going to research uh, in order to write a paper for school. If I leave no stone unturned in my research, it means I've read every single book I could find on the subject. Okay. So I've done a very, very thorough job. Uh, let's next question. Lee Yi Turk, which one is correct? An elephant is a mammal. The elephant is a, is a mammal. Elephant is so the first one is the most correct. An elephant is a mammal. The second one is incorrect because you have an in front of mammal and it should be a. Uh. You could say the elephant is a, a mammal, like just the letter A. And number three, uh, you wouldn't say. You would not say that one. So number one is correct. Number two has a small error. Number three, I would not use. Let's see here. Um, next question from Valerie. Hello, Teacher Bob. Hello. Have you ever built a loft in the barn? And second question, what is the difference between I got my house repaired and I repaired my house? So first of all, no, I have not built a loft in the barn, but we do play ping pong in the barn sometimes. We didn't do it as much last year as the year before, um, but we do have an area in the um, upper part of the barn where my kids play in the summer. Second part of your question, I got my house repaired and I repaired my house. They they kind of mean the same thing. Let me explain the slight difference. If I say, I got my house repaired, it means I hired another person to come and fix my house. If I say I repaired my house, it could mean that I fixed it myself, okay? It could mean that you hired someone, but it mostly means that you did it yourself. So if I say I got my house repaired, it means someone came and did it. If I say I repaired my house, it means most likely that I did it myself. That's a great question. Let me get rid of the questions I have covered. Uh, let's see here. Next question. Um, Vitaly Smirnov. Hello, Teacher Bob. Hello, Vitaly. Um, hope you're doing well. I am. Uh, which accent do you find the most difficult for learners? I find the Aussie accent difficult. Um, one sec here. Um, and one more, do you like maple syrup? So yes, I like maple syrup. It is a sweet syrup from maple trees. Um, and I, I'm not sure which accent is the most difficult. For me, the most difficult accent is uh, the Irish accent is very difficult, um, especially when they speak very, very quickly. Let's see here. Uh, next question is from Dima. Hi, Bob. Thank you so much for your hard work. For English learners, I have a question about travel in Canada. Um, is it is it real to ride from Toronto? Oh, are you able to ride from Toronto to Vancouver only by train? Yes, you totally can take the train almost anywhere in Canada, except right now the trains aren't running because there are protests in Canada. And so our train system is currently not running for a few days while the government figures out um, what to do that. Um, let's see here. Next question from Ruslan. Um, let's see. Um, hello from Russia, Mr. Bob. Could you explain the difference um, of that and which in complex sentences? So basically you can join two phrases together using the words that or which. So I could say something like, um, that is the car that I drove when I was younger. You could also say that is the car which I drove when I was younger, but that is far more common, okay? You could say um, that is the teacher, um, this is the teacher that taught me English, or you could say something like um, this is the book which I used when I took an English class. So a couple of examples there, it's not a perfect um, explanation, but um, it at least gives you a few example sentences. Um, Adri says, hello, Bob, how often do you work on Saturday? Have a good stream. So I don't often work on Saturday in the winter. Often in the summer, Jen and I are working on the farm. We are cutting flowers. We are putting flowers into bouquets, etc., etc. Um, but in the winter, no. In fact, uh, today is going to be a relaxing day for me. When I'm done this live lesson, I have no other plans 
for the rest of today. I will probably just have a nap and I might do some reading. Um, Masha from Ukraine, what's the difference between the suburbs and the outskirts? So the suburbs are the houses around a city. So you have the downtown part of the city and then outside of the city a little bit, you have the suburbs um, and suburbs are where people live, okay? You live in the suburbs. Uh, the outskirts of town are any part of the town that's close to the edge of the town or city, okay? So when you are on the outskirts of Toronto, it just means that you're really far from the downtown area of Toronto. Um, before I go on, I just wanna thank everyone who's here again. This is a question and answer session. Thank you to the 525 people who are watching. That is awesome. Please remember, use the link to ask questions. Uh, the link might not be appearing much because there are quite a few questions in the queue. Uh, so please be patient. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Uh, if you're new, hit the subscribe button. Thumbs ups are always awesome. Uh, let's get to the next question. Oh, and one last thing. Uh, thank you to all of you who are listening to this as a podcast. Uh, that's awesome of you. Uh, whatever podcast platform you are on, if you could give me a rating, that would be awesome. Uh, and for those of you watching this live, do remember that in a few hours, this will be available as a podcast if you want to practice um, your listening skills. Let me get to the next question. And we will keep moving, keep moving along. Um, let's see. Um, Pastor Padilla says, hi, Bob. Greetings from Honduras. What's the difference between issue, problem, and trouble? So I can, I can have an issue with a person. That means I disagree with them. I can have an issue with my car. That means something is broken. I can have a problem with a person, which means I disagree with them or they've done something that annoys me. I can have a problem with my car, which means it's broken. Uh, and I can have trouble with a person. That's a little more serious. Uh, and I can have trouble with my car, which means that something is broken on it. So they all mean almost the same thing. The best way to learn how to use them is to hear some more example sentences of all of them. Let's see. Um, Next question is from Elias Gomez from Brazil. Hi, Robert. How are you? What is the difference between especially and specially? So first of all, yes, Bob is a short form of a longer name, and that name is Robert, uh, but I usually go by Bob. And especially and specially. So I usually look this one up because I don't want to uh, say it wrong. Um, first of all, it is especially hard to give good answers without looking them up once in a while. So in this case, I will look it up. Did you hear how I used especially? Um, so it says here, especially and specially have slightly different meanings, okay? Both can mean particularly. So especially tends to be more formal, especially is a little more informal. Um, but there are finer words worth looking up and then there's an article there. I think you should read the article. I will give you two examples though. It is especially hard to think of answers doing a, during a live stream. So that's how I would use especially. Um, and Jen, uh, this tea was specially made just for me by Jen. So thank you, Jen, for making me tea. So there you have uh, an example of each. Hey, I'm seeing someone in the chat say, Bob, Dave, Todd, have a wonderful weekend. Yeah, I just want to mention Dave and Todd work really hard to make these live lessons work. I could not do these live lessons with 520 people watching if I didn't have good moderators. So I do wanna say thank you to Dave and Todd. If you wanna thank Dave and Todd in the chat once in a while, I think that makes them uh, happy, um, but uh, they are integral in the live stream. That means that they are very, very important. Let's see here. Um, next question. <laughs> Lolly Lolly says, Jen is a great person. Yes, she is. Robert, hi, Bob. What is, oh, your name is Robert. We have the same name. Um, Bob, what was it your idea to start class on YouTube um, or yours? I mean, you and your wife. Okay, so the reason I started this channel on YouTube is because I, I, I was teaching a computer class and I thought I need to learn how to do YouTube so I can teach my students how to do YouTube. I thought I could teach French on YouTube, but I'm not a native French speaker. I am a French teacher, but when I speak French, I have a bit of an accent. So I thought I'll teach English. I will use all of the skills that I have learned to teach a language, which is French, and I will adapt them to teaching English and I'll make a couple videos and that will be it. 
So I made a few videos and people watched them and people liked them. So I kept making them. And now we are here a little over three years later and uh, it's a lot of fun. I really like doing this and I'm going to keep doing it. Uh, next question, here we go. Uh, Ann Saros, hi Bob. In Adam's song, excuse me, in Adam's song from Blink 182, there is a part that says, you'll close it off, board it up. What does board it up mean? So when a house no longer has people living in it, they will often board it up. That means they put wood or boards over the windows so that the windows don't get smashed or so the weather doesn't break the windows. So when a house is boarded up, first of all, it means no one lives there anymore. And secondly, it means that wood, particularly a wood we call plywood, has been put over every single window so that people can't break in and so that people can't break the windows. So that's what mean. That's what it means uh, when something is boarded up. Let's see here. Renald has the next question. Renald Liret says, can I use the word no dressing to refer to no ketchup, no mustard, or no mayonnaise? Merci. I would say no toppings or no condiments. Those are not technically dressings. Dressings are things we put on salads. Those are condiments or toppings that you would put on a hamburger or hot dog. Technically, they're not even really toppings. I would say they're definitely condiments. Um, but I would just say no ketchup, no mayo, no, no mustard. Um, and actually say the words if that's what I was ordering. Uh, next question from Cecilia. Hi, sir. I want to know the difference between panel interview and group interview. So a panel is usually called a panel discussion. A panel discussion is when you see two or three people sitting at a table on television and there is a person who will talk to each person on the panel. Um, a group interview is similar um, but it's usually people sitting in a more casual location. So um, essentially what you're talking about is someone having a discussion or a conversation with more than one person. Um, usually we would call it a panel. So I have a panel of guests here today who are going to help me discuss the English language. I should do that sometime, shouldn't I? Should I find a panel of people um, who can uh, just help you guys learn English or all of you learn English? Um, Eduardo, Botra, I just saw someone in the comments say, hey, hi, I'm, I'm late. Sorry, this is Manu Detrill. I was watching The Big Bang Theory in English. That's a funny show. It's a little odd, the humor, but it is a funny show. Um, Eduardo Botrell. Hi, Bob. Thanks for spending your time teaching us English. No problem. I have a question. Is it is the expression bear with me used a lot in everyday life? When can I use it? So bear with me while I explain this to you. So you heard I just used it there. When you say bear with me, it means, you know, even if I get boring while I'm explaining this, even if I talk for a long time, please listen until I'm done explaining. So if I say bear with me while I explain this to you, it means please just listen until you understand everything that I am explaining. Okay, let's go to the next question. Um, it is from Nuri. It's a long question. I have to read the question quickly before I paste it. So sometimes it takes me a little bit. Nuri says, hi, Bob. While writing and speaking, I don't want to use the same words to improve my vocabulary, but sometimes choosing another synonym confuses me. Do you have a suggestion? First of all, don't worry about it. When you are speaking English, your primary goal is to communicate effectively. It's not to always use as many words as you can. And in fact, native English speakers um, aren't going to notice and the act of speaking will eventually allow you to use a lot of extra words. So for instance, a good example would be, you know, uh, instead of saying hello, you say hi, or you say, how's it going? You don't really have to worry about learning 25 ways to say hello in English. Just learn two or three. And eventually, as you have conversations, you will learn a bit more. Um, let's see here. Um, so Bashiwell Nurka, I'm not sure if that's been pasted a number of times, Todd and Dave, we want to have a look, scroll back on that, just to make sure we're not getting too much spam. Um, let's see here. Um, so don't worry about it, uh, Nuri. Uh, try in your conversations to just have a good conversation. Um, and then don't worry about using new words that you've just learned. Uh, let's see here. Um, 
Oh, this is a loaded question. We say, we say that. Um, let's see. Um, Hi, Mr. Bob. Here, it is already night. I have to go to sleep. My question is, what's your favorite country? My favorite countries are Japan and the United States of America. So I have not yet on this live stream said, besides Canada, which is my own country, what my favorite country is. But here's what I will say. I love all the people that are learning English from me, no matter what country they are from. I just love it that when I look at my stats, I see people from every country in the world. So I do not have a favorite country. Um, I do love Canada, of course, because I am Canadian, um, but there is no other country that I love more than other countries. If you were to push me on it though, and make me admit it, because I am a French speaker as well, I do like all of the French speaking countries in the world just a tiny little bit more no, not really. That's, I shouldn't say that, should I? Um, I have a special place in my heart for French-speaking countries. That's a better way to say it. So I love all countries equally, but I do have a special place in my heart for countries where they speak French. Uh, let's go to the next question. Uh, Maxime Yurov says, hello, Bob. How's it going? Why are Canadians so polite? So Canadians, for some reason, are known um, for being very, very polite. We say sorry a lot. We say excuse me. We thank people for things. Um, and I, I'm not sure if that is true. What I do know is that um, we, uh, I think, try our best to be kind to people. Canada is a large country with not a lot of people, okay? I've made videos before and in the comments people have said, where are all the people in that town? You were in a town and there's no people because um, there's a lot of people, uh, sorry, there's a lot of space and not as many people as other countries. So I think when we do run into other Canadians, we are just kind and uh, polite to them. I think that's why. If you watch hockey, though, we're not very polite. <laughs> Our hockey players like to rough up the other team a little bit sometimes. Uh, next question. Here we go. Let me have a sip of tea here. Okay. I like all the flowers and hearts in the chat. That's really nice. Um, next question. Parts. Hi, Bob. I'm so glad that I got to know about your videos. I'm learning a lot. May I know the pronunciation of September and February? Thanks in advance. So September is the month when school starts. September, September. This past September, I went back to school and started teaching again after my summer break. And February is weird because it has an R in it. And we don't say February, we say February. We say the R maybe a tiny, tiny bit, but you don't need to say the R. You can just say, yesterday was February 14th. It was Valentine's Day. Uh, it was a nice day. Let's see here. Lolly Lolly says she'll invite me to France. Thanks, Lolly Lolly. Um, next question here is from, oh, I have to get to the right spot here. Lazar, hi, Bob, from Algeria. What's the difference between I like, I would like? One is simply a little more polite, okay? Um, oh, no, sorry, I take that back. If I say I like, it just means that I, I like something. Like I like tea, um, I like hamburgers. If you are ordering something though in a restaurant, you would say I would like or I'd like, okay? So if I say, um, oh, I would like a cup of tea and I would like a muffin. That's what you would use in a restaurant. But if I'm talking to someone, I could say, oh, I like tea. I like muffins. So there's a slight difference there. Um, Wojcik in the chat says, hello, Mr. Bob. How is the weather in Canada right now? It is very, very cold, Wojcik. It is, uh, I think, minus six right now. It was minus 10 or minus 15 last night. Very, very cold out there. Let's see here. Let me clean up my questions. Um, I like the one question per person, but I still seem to get behind. Um, Suek has the next question. Suek says, hi, Bob. Do you know any Canadian actors, actresses personally? No, I don't. My favorite is David Hewlett. Um, no, I do not know any famous people. I do know a couple of YouTubers, um, but they're not famous YouTubers. They're just about the same size as me. Just really nice um, YouTubers. Um, let's see here. Let's see, okay. Um, Tuong says, hi, Bob. I'm Tuong from Vietnam. Thank you so much for all the lessons. No problem. 
um, I want to ask, what is the difference between two words, wearing and putting? So <laughs> this morning when I was putting on this shirt, um, I realized that um, I think I realized that I wore this shirt in the video last week. I think I did. But anyways, when I was putting on this shirt, that's what I was thinking about. Um, when you wear a shirt, like right now I am wearing this shirt, okay? So when you put on a shirt, it's, you know, you've put it on and you're doing up the buttons. When you are wearing a shirt or when you wear a shirt, you already have it on. Hopefully that made some sense. <laughs> I feel like the longer the lesson goes, the harder it is for me to explain stuff sometimes. But we'll just keep going here. Let me get the next question in here. The next question is from Anna. Anna says, hello, Bob. What's better to say at the beginning of the class after hello? Sit down, please, or have a seat. So you could say either. You could say sit down, please. If you say sit down without saying please, that is very direct and very forceful language. But if you say students sit down, please, uh, or you could say, could you please have a seat? And you can also say have a seat. You don't have to say please with that. It's already a little bit more welcoming in terms of English speech. So you could say, um, students, please have a seat. Sit down, please. And then if one student doesn't sit down, you could say, Joe, sit down. So you would use a bit stronger language. Uh, you could also say, Joe, please sit down. I don't usually have to use strong language in my classes. For the most part, I have really nice students. So that's really nice. Um, hi, Bob. Ramesh from Nepal. I have a question to ask you. Would you please tell me how to improve my speaking skills? So I recommend this a lot, but in the description below, there's a link to a website called Preply. They also have an app. Um, Preply is a place where you can hire someone to have a one-to-one -one English conversation with. That is the best way to improve your skills. Everything else you can do for free. You can read for free. You can watch YouTube videos for free. You can write for free. Um, but at some point in your English learning journey, you need to find a native speaker to talk to. Either someone who will do it for free or like a website like Preply, uh, a place where you could hire someone. So anyways, there is a link below. Click that. Do a little bit of research. See if that's something that will help you. Let's see. Next one. Next question. Uh, Maya, my Muna. Hi, Bob, and thank you so much for giving us some of your time. If you don't mind, what is the meaning of commission? And can can I put it in a sentence? Sure. When you are a salesperson, so when you are someone who sells things, there's two ways that you can get paid. Your boss might just pay you to do the job of selling something, or you might get paid a commission. A commission means that you get a certain percent of the money if you sell something. In Canada, when you are a realtor, when you are someone who sells houses, whenever you sell a house, you get paid a commission. So you get a percentage of the sale price of that house. Sorry, if I look uncomfortable, I feel like I'm going to sneeze at any moment. Let me just... Uh, rub my nose a bit and stop that from happening. Um, when you get a commission, you instead of getting a hourly an hourly wage or a salary from your boss, you get paid by how much you sell and you get a percentage of what you are selling. Let's see, next question. Um, Kizmo says, hi Bob, should I say I do a triathlon? Yeah, okay, let me not say anything incorrect. So you would say, I am going to do a triathlon. You could also say I'm going to run a triathlon. Even though a triathlon has running, biking, and swimming, you could still say, oh, I'm going to run a triathlon next week. Um, but mostly you would say I'm going to do a triathlon. <laughs> if I was saying it, though, I would say I'm going to attempt to do a triathlon, which means I would probably start the triathlon and then, and then probably not finish it. <laughs> for sure. Um, I think I would fail on the swimming part. That would be the part that would be very difficult for me. Uh, Aslan has the next question. Aslan says, hi, Bob from Volgograd, Stalingrad. I think you asked a question last week, Aslan, if I remember. Uh, I appreciate your job very much. I love pure English. Do you understand easily another dialect like Scottish, Wales, or Indian, and so on? So generally, yes depending on how fast those native English speakers talk. Uh, like I said earlier, the Irish accents can be difficult for me to understand. Um, but for the most part, I watch 
television from Britain. I watch television from Ireland. Uh, in French, I watch television from Quebec or France or Belgium. And all of those uh, accents, after a minute or two, it does take a while to adjust. Usually, it's no problem understanding them. Um, let's see here. Ja has the next question. Uh, to easily understand native speakers. So I think the question is, how do I easily understand native speakers? Number one thing you can do when you're watching a video like this is use the YouTube player to slow it down and practice all of your listening at first by listening to things that you can slow down by 10 or 20% and listening to things where you can read the subtitles. Then eventually, so let me have a drink of water here, turn the subtitles off and bring it up to full speed or even faster. Those are two things you can do to improve your uh, listening skills. Uh, next question from Frankie from Hong Kong. Hi, Bob. What is the difference between tableware and utensils? So we use the word utensils, knives, forks, spoons. Uh, we don't often use the word tableware. And I'm just going to look it up for a sec. Tableware, I think, would refer more to plates and cups and spoon or sorry plates and cups and bowls okay so we wouldn't we would just call those dishes you need to we need to set the table uh we need to put out some uh plates and bowls and spoons we don't use the word tableware um we do sometimes use the word dishware um i'm just looking it up for a sec i want to see if tableware is a more common word it says it's a common english word uh in canada but i i don't often use tableware um, we usually just say someone needs to set the table. Uh, Nexion has the next question. Hello, Bob. How do we pronounce, so a little correction there, how do we pronounce pressure, gesture, bridge, and cage? Thanks for teaching English. It's no problem. Um, so here's some um, sentences, okay? So um, when you blow up a balloon or when you blow up or pump up a car tire, there is a lot of pressure in the tire, okay? A lot of pressure, uh, a lot of air pressure in particular. A gesture is something that you do. Um, I won't do, but you can like gesture at someone if you're angry. There's other hand gestures that mean really bad things. Um, and then bridge, so when you drive along a road, sometimes you go over a bridge uh, because there's a river or stream and the road needs to go over the bridge. And the last one, uh, sometimes we put an animal in a cage, okay? So there you go. Let's see. Next one uh, is from Irina from Toronto, just over there, about an hour and a half hour drive, depending on traffic. Uh, Hi, dear teacher. Thank you for your lessons. What is your advice to teachers who work in an ISL classroom for immigrants? Um, thank you and have a great day. So number one thing I would recommend is if you're teaching immigrants is teach them uh, how to shop, how to apply for a job, how to function uh, at the grocery store, how to speak English at the grocery store, how to buy gas, how to uh, buy a car, how to go to the bank and get a bank account. Um, all of the things that an English native would do as a daily routine, teach that right away. Teach them all the language that they need to get through their day and to get a job and then the language they would need to do that job. That's what I would highly, highly recommend. Uh, next question from Lily from Vietnam. Is there any difference between near and nearby? And what's this? And what's the sentence unless you've been living under a rock mean? So first of all, um, my sister lives near me. My sister lives nearby. So notice the difference there. So my sister lives near me. So I'm including me at the end. And I could say my sister lives nearby. Those two sentences mean the same thing. But the first one does need the word mere, uh, me at the end. As for your phrase, uh, unless you've been living under a rock, um, if you live, if you say someone's been living under a rock, it means they don't know what's going on in the world. So they haven't heard the news for a week or two. You could say, what, have you been living under a rock? So if someone said that they didn't know that there was a the coronavirus in the world right now, you could say, what, have you been living under a rock? How could you not know that? Um, so if you think that someone's been living under a rock, it means uh, for sure that they have not been watching the news. Let's see here. Kai ha, kai, I'm not sure how to pronounce this. Kaya, hi Bob. I just want to greet, 
send greetings from Indonesia. Thank you very much. Gra glad to see you in this live. The lesson you convey very much helps me in learning new things about English. Thanks. So no problem, Kaya. I am super happy that you are here watching. Um, I see a few other thank yous in the chat. I appreciate that. Thank you, people, for stopping in uh, to say thank you. Brief pause. Thanks to the 590 people who are watching. That's very awesome of you. Don't forget, there are a lot of other videos on this channel for you to watch. So if you are watching this live stream and you are new, please subscribe and then take some time later today or tomorrow uh, just to find some of my other videos. Again, this video will be available as a podcast in a couple hours. It's also available online with English subtitles tomorrow. Do come and watch parts of it again. It's really, really good for practicing your English. Let's get back to the lesson though. Um, next question is from Andre says, um, hi, Mr. Bob, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Which of these questions is correct? So I, I fixed something there. Which of these questions is correct? Do you know who Scott is or do you know who is? So neither. So it would be, do you know who Scott is? If you are talking about a person named Scott and you are asking someone if they know who he is, you would say, do you know who Scott is? Do you know who Todd is? Do you know who Dave is? By the way, Todd and Dave are the guys that helped me in the chat. So uh, did you guys thank them earlier? I hope that you did. Let's see here. Um, next question. Chico from Ukraine. Hello, Bob. What is the difference? Make sure there's a the in that question. What is the difference between get burning and to light? So get burning isn't a very common phrase. And, and I'm trying to think of a way to use it. Like if I want to get the fire burning, it means that I would get a match and I would get some newspaper and I would get the fire burning. We wouldn't say get burning in, in that way. We would say get the fire burning. But most likely we would say we want to get the fire started or we want to light the fire. Okay. Um, I think the most common way to say that would be I'm going to light the fire or I'm going to get the fire started. Those would be the two most common ways to do it. Um, next question, Hamreen Ibrahim, Syria. Hello, coach. Thank you. Um, you know, I had students years ago that called me coach and I didn't even coach a team, but they called me coach. I thought that was funny. It was my nickname as a teacher. Anyways, Hamreen says, uh, you are doing a good job. Thank you to help us. And thanks a lot. What is the difference between children, kids, and toddlers? So toddlers, so we have babies. And then when they start to walk or when they can first walk, we usually call them toddlers. And then children and kids are older than toddlers. Okay. So it's kind of, there's no exact age, but we have babies when they are walking, we call them toddlers because I think, cause when they walk, they, they toddle along. Is that an English word? You should look that up. Uh, and then we just have children and kids, which are the same. You know, we could use the word kids. To refer to someone who's nine, you could call, you could say that they are a child or you refer to them as children. Uh, let's see here. And Pham has the next question. How often do you have live streams, sir? So this is my new plan. I have live streams on Friday morning at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I have live streams on Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, I was doing live streams Saturday evenings, but I am going to keep doing them at this time, right? Like what you are watching right now, uh, because it just works better uh, for me and my family. It gives me a little bit of a break uh, on the Saturday afternoon uh, to do other things. And uh, I get this done early in the morning instead of later in the day. Did you hear the bird in my cup? <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, next question. Um, is from Alexei from Russia. Hello, Bob. Thank you for your lessons. I noticed some nesting dolls behind you on the shelf are those from Russia. I believe they are from Ukraine, um, but I have to check. They were a gift uh, from my in-laws, from my father-in-law and mother-in-law. They had a visitor who was from uh, that part of the world. Uh, and I will ask them, but they were a gift. Uh, the person visiting them brought nesting dolls uh, for all of their children. So it's kind of cool. I like them over there. 
I like to put things from different parts of the world behind me, including my postcards. Uh, <clears throat> got a little tickle in my throat again, so I'm just going to drink some more tea. It's making me laugh, that sound my cup makes. Uh, loan from Vietnam. Hi, Bob. This is the middle of the night in my country, but I really like your live stream. So it's okay for me. Well, I'm glad you're watching. Sorry, the hour or the time isn't great. My question is, what is the difference between request and require? So when I go to a store, I can request that they order something for me. I can tell them what I require, and then I can request that they order it. When you say that you require something, it means you need it. So I could go to the hardware store and say that um, one of the things I require for my next project is a special tool. And then I could, if they don't have it in the store, I could request that they order it from me. So that would be to ask them that they order it from me. Let's see here. <laughs> uh, Martin from Poland has a comment. Martin from Poland says, hello, sweet, handsome bear. <laughs> Thank you. Um, if you don't know what a bear is, it's a large uh, animal in Canada and other parts of the world. What is the best way to learn phrasal verbs? I think this is the most difficult topic in English for people in Poland in general. It's a, it's difficult for everyone, uh, Martin, for sure. Uh, phrasal verbs are just a challenge. I do have a few videos on phrasal verbs that might help where I act them out. Uh, a lot of people like those. So I, if you search Bob the Canadian phrasal verbs, there's three of them. Uh, watch those, they might be helpful. I'll put them in the uh, first comment below later today, links to those. Um, but basically you need to use them in everyday speech. So you need to learn them and then you need to practice using them uh, in everyday speech. That's the best way uh, to learn phrasal verbs. If you just try to memorize them, it doesn't work. Um, I think my videos help a bit because you know when I fall down, I actually fall down. So it might be uh, easy uh, to follow. Uh, next question <clears throat> is from Irina Savchenko. Hi, Bob. Please explain the difference between to follow and to follow down. Thank you. So the only difference I can think is this. Um, if someone follows someone, it means one person's walking and the other person's walking. But you could say that, uh, you know, I saw uh, someone following someone down the road. So if you follow someone down the road or follow someone downstairs, you're simply indicating which direction you're going. But follow down is not really uh, a common verb to follow down, but to follow definitely is. Um, let's see. Um, I'm going to skip this one. Well, I'll do this one. So technically one of these were, oh, not sure what I just posted there. Oh, I posted, sorry. I'm uh, copying and pasting failure. So Dumitru says how to pronounce bitch, beach, and beach. So first of all, the first word bitch is a word we use to refer to a dog who is female, but it's also a very, um, um, it's a name that people call people, okay? So it's not a good word, uh, but you should know the bad words in English as well. So bitch is the first word. The second word is beach. You can go to the beach. There's lots of sand at the beach. And then the last word is beach, which is a type of tree. So there you go. Let me see if I can get a few more questions done um, before. Uh, Pintu Kumar Day says, I need your help to go to Canada. I can't help you come to Canada, but if you search on Google for how to immigrate to Canada, there are lots of pages of information that you can read there that will help you. So try there. That is the best. Uh, let's see here. Um, next question from Grace Chin. Hi, Bob. Uh, can you tell me what does, what does it mean, I like you as a person? Thank you. Um, what does I like you as a person mean? So this is what someone says. If two people are dating, you know, if two people like each other and they are uh, dating, they're going out on dates, but the one person only likes the other person as a friend. So you could say, I think we should break up. I mean, I like you as a person. I just don't like you as a boyfriend or girlfriend. So it's kind of a sad thing that people say uh, when they are breaking up. When you break up, it means you stop dating, by the way. So if you meet someone and you date, it means you go out to eat, you go to movies, you spend time together. When you break up, you are no longer dating. Uh, you are no longer with each other. Uh, let's see here. Um, 
Mohammed, last question goes to Mohammed. We need episodes about idioms. I will try my best to do a few episodes about idioms, Mohammed. Um, maybe I'll try to think of one for this Tuesday. I have a few ideas for this Tuesday, but uh, that might be a good one. Um, hey, I just want to <clears throat> wrap up this lesson. It has been one hour. Thank you so much for watching. A few things to remember. Uh, do go to YouTube and search Bob the Canadian phrasal verbs. There's three really good videos on phrasal verbs for you to watch. Thank you, Chao Ferreira, for the super chat. Uh, what is the most popular sport in Canada is the question. It's definitely hockey. Um, thank you to all of you who are watching, a little over 600. That's awesome for a Saturday morning. Please subscribe if you are new here. Give me a thumbs up and uh, do all the things that you normally do with a YouTube video. Uh, if you do want to uh, watch this again tomorrow with English subtitles on, that would be a great idea. Um, again, I'm Bob the Canadian. Um, I was going to say one other thing and I can't remember what it is, but that's okay. I can just say it uh, next week. New video Tuesday. Lesson next Friday, lesson next Saturday, uh, lives. I'll see you then. Uh, anyways, this was fun. Have a great weekend. Uh, have a great day. 